Uh, my name is Nick Gavrilides, and we're at the Soup Spoon Cafe on the east side of uh, Lansing, downtown area. We've been here for just over six and a half years. I got a job when I was in high school uh, working in a restaurant, and uh, you know, I was geez, 20 plus years ago, and I've just worked in restaurants ever since. The transition was kind of a natural progression. I just, you know, I, I just kind of learned the ways of the restaurant, learned the ways of the kitchen, and uh, just ex had some talent there. So eventually worked my way up, and uh, restaurant owners gave me a chance at running their kitchens, and that's about how that went. So. It's completely experimental and experiential, too. So we like to, I like to experiment with different things, different products that I like, putting them together in different ways, and then use the experience of trial and error, you know, and just keep growing and, and putting techniques together and, and grabbing, you know, different kinds of ingredients and food and techniques from all over, you know, anything that's good. So. Obviously our soups uh, is what I would say, you know, we make a great wonderful seafood chowder that everyone loves and our French onion. I could eat those two soups every day. So, well, soup is the ultimate comfort food in my mind. That's why, that's why I named the place that. Um, so, you know, I think I would definitely hang our hat on our soups that way. So. Yeah. The other thing with us too is that we change our menu so often, you know, we, we change our menu up to six times a year. So it's hard to, you know, you know, there's always a couple things that always stay on there, like the lamb shank has made it through every menu change, and, and the voodoo pasta, and, and things like that. There's a few items that are always there, but a lot of things we just, we change seasonally, and so it's hard, you know, you, you get attached to something, but then we, you know, a couple months down the road when the weather starts changing, we might bring something else on, you know, so we're constantly trying to evolve. We were very seasonal. Um, I have a chef, his name's Jason Blastic, and uh, you know, I've kind of moved out to the front of the house and kind of managing out here and doing the office work, which is kind of depressing. I mean, I love the kitchen. That's where I wanted to be, but it needed, it was time. But my chef, Jason, he's absolutely just a wonderful chef. He's very good. He uh, really understands food and does a great job with execution, and uh, he's real seasonally minded like that too. So you know, us together, we come up with the menus, and, and, and uh, it, it, we try to stay seasonal just because you know the product is freshest when it's seasonal, and, and uh, you know people kind of eat seasonally too. You know, it's 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 interesting. You'll see that in the summer, in the spring, when the weather starts to break like this, and in the summertime, people are just really eating seafood, fresh fish, fresh veggies, a lot lighter fare. And you can keep trying to do that in the fall, but as it starts to get colder and colder and colder, you can offer all this fresh fish, but they people just gravitate towards the uh, the braised meats and the heavier foods. So it's I think people are just kind of wired to eat seasonally anyway, so we just try to keep up with that. It seems to work. We're a member of Capital Area Local First, so you know we. Uh, we're involved, I mean, we're a member of the organization, and we support. You know, we're happy to be a member, and and we support their mission uh, statement and everything that they're about, which is supporting the local area businesses and trying to hold each other up. So yeah, we're, we're pro Capital Area Local First. You know, when when you support local business, you keep the the dollars in the community in the community because generally the people that own the local businesses, live in the community, do their shopping in the community, they go to their local grocery store to buy the groceries, they go to the barber to get their hair cut. So kind of all just supporting each other and keeping that economy local where, you know, chain companies come in and a lot of those dollars, sure they employ local people, but a lot of the, the profit dollars go somewhere else to be used rather than staying in the community. I think it, I think it definitely is a, a factor. We've done some events with, with other local businesses. We did a barbecue competition with Fork in the Road, which was really fun. They do a really good job over there. We, we're, we're really, really proud to be uh, in the same culinary uh, area as them. They do, they do a great job, especially with the local sourcing and that kind of thing. So we definitely recommend them and think that that's a good thing. That's the thing. Capital Area Local First, even beyond that, just local you know, restaurants that have 
owners that are actually in the building working, getting, you know, with their with their hands on on the product. There, that's what you know. That's where you're going to get the best food and the best service. And that's why I think, you know, we've been successful, and I think that that's why they're successful too. You know, that Haven and them because that, you know, they own the business, they love the business just like us, and they're there. You know, so making sure that food looks right, food is right. You know, both when it comes in the back door and when it goes out to the table. And people, you know, they respond to that. Lansing's ready for that. I think there's room for more of that in town, actually. We're, I've already surpassed my 20-year vision in six, so uh, that, that I don't know where we're going. I know this, is that we haven't even scratched the tip of the iceberg on culinary styles and and the depths we haven't we haven't plumbed the depths of the culinary world at all so we've got three or four lifetimes worth of creativity and, and food to, and, and beverage and cocktails and bar service and to go so we just want to keep keep honing keep keep bringing out new stuff trying to keep it exciting we like to do events so i mean we've got plenty of plenty of work to do just within these walls we don't have any plans for expansion right now. It's more than the food. It really is. It's more than the food. Uh, in, my, in my household, we've always had, you know, living with my parents, they've always been entertainers. The family functions have always been at our house. They've always, my parents have always had dinner parties and, and people over on the weekends and relatives over. And it's uh, it always involved great food, you know, good music, uh, you know. All the, the hosting of gathering, so it's kind of in our blood, in my blood a little bit, to to be that host. And so I think my philosophy about, my overall philosophy about food alone is anything that makes you say yum and satisfies you. It doesn't matter what it is. If you love it and it's well prepared and well made, then that's good. That's my philosophy on food is well made food. That's it. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's made well and it's quality product. Simple as that. That's why we don't have one certain style. We don't, we're not a Chinese restaurant or an American restaurant or a barbecue restaurant. I mean, we, we'll do a little bit of everything. As long as it's good, it fits. But the overall concept, why this is so meaningful to me, is because it's the entire package. It's the, it's the eclectic decor. It's the comfort of the colors when you come in. It's the craft beer and the classic cocktails that warm you up as you sip them. It's the friendly, quirky service of our staff and, and how they dress. And the food fits in as a very important piece of that overall puzzle. So it's just, that's like, to me, coming to work every day is throwing a breakfast, lunch, and dinner party every day. Which, if you ask my family, my wife, and my kids, or my parents, they tell you that I'm forever inviting everybody over to my house all the time to eat and drink and uh, have a good time. So it's, it's, just, it's just what I kind of do. So it's just always been that way. So I always had the parties that memorial parties at our house and the you know the holiday gatherings with the family at my house. I mean it's just I don't know, it just fits. For some reason that's my personality is that host personality. That's, that's our chef. That's Chef Jason. He just arrived he's probably doing an order for the weekend. This is a this is a picture around the soup spoon. This is Alan Coyle. He does our uh, social media. <laughs> he does our Facebook page and our Twitter account. And Go spoon. So, sometimes I'll throw a little added post in there and then he yells at me. I do. Because <laughs> I probably screw it up. Uh, this is our, uh, this is kind of the pub side, the bar area where we, uh, seating of the restaurant, we put tables back here, we can push them together for larger groups. It's our mug club. Um, we have a, a beer mug club, Playworks, local potters guild makes the mugs for us. And, uh, it's a beer thing. So. Um, but it's kind of cool, they're all original. This is our bar. That's Angela. She's our catering manager and our day bartender, and she's super <laughs> awesome. And we can't do this without her for sure. Um, this bar top, we had this bar built a couple years ago, and actually this is one plank. It was a rough sawn uh, piece of oak that was donated to us. So I don't know if people know anything about oak, but I guess a plank this size of rough sawn oak is very rare, and it's a uh, very valuable piece of wood that someone gave to us to make into the bar, so that, that's pretty cool. We have all the really high-end cocktails. We mix everything by hand. We're big on classic cocktails. Um, this was the original, the original side of the restaurant. 
when we opened, it was just this space here. We had nine tables. It was lunch only. We added breakfast, and we renovated this, blew out this hole in the wall, added that, added dinner, did all that. But this has kind of gone through some changes. Uh, this wall here is actually a local uh, art show that is rotating. We have a curator that hangs up local art on this wall. So they rotate over here. Back on this side of the restaurant, we have some of our own art that we own, but it's all local artists. A friend of mine, his name is Rob Shelberg. He's a wonderful artist. Hey, how's it going? Um, these are our cooks in our kitchen. We just actually had this, uh, this, this kitchen installed um, the first uh, week of this year. If you'd ever seen the spoon before then, it was the hood system was a third of the size, and we had one little stove with six burners back there and just a teeny little grill. So we added a bunch of equipment, a bunch of ventilation, and expanded the kitchen like that. So the cooks are a lot happier with that. And we get the food out a lot faster. That's Danny. He's one of our big main day guys. He's, uh, he's awesome. How you doing? This is kind of the back of the kitchen side. We got the skylights people like to eat back here. That's about it. It's a pretty small place, so but we we love it and we get it done here, so